Arthur Ford grew up hearing stories of Americans suffering and dying in harsh camp conditions, but he never imagined that he'd live it. Ford's family owned a house in Morristown, New Jersey, where General George Washington had set up headquarters during the winter of 1780. Thousands of soldiers in the Continental Army struggled for food, shelter, and clothing. Growing up, Arthur heard stories about these soldiers suffering and of General Washington from his grandfather, Gabriel, who lived in the house with Washington and his staff. In 1860, young Arthur Ford joined the United States Navy, serving on board the USS Susquehanna until 1863. He then enlisted into the 7th New Jersey Infantry, but was captured and sent to Andersonville. Suddenly, he was experiencing the suffering that he'd heard about all his life. Arthur's father, Henry, wrote to his brother, Dr. Lewis Ford, a prominent physician living in Augusta, Georgia, and asked him to check on Arthur and the prison at Andersonville. Dr. Ford visited his young nephew, but it was too late. Dr. Ford wrote to Arthur's father, My ever dear brother, a letter from my Emily of the 31st will have brought you the sad tidings of the death of your son Arthur. On four hours' notice, I left on the same day to secure his remains and bring them home. I finally succeeded on the third, but after six days' burial, they were in such condition they could not be removed. I therefore deposited the body in a new coffin and buried it on the premises of a friend, surrounding the grave with a firm enclosure. After the war, Arthur's remains were exhumed again and returned to Andersonville National Cemetery, where he rests alongside thousands of his fellow comrades. His two stones, one marking his original burial in October 1864 and one marking his final resting place, stand as a testament to the familial bonds that stood strong despite the political differences that ripped the nation his grandfather saw created apart.